Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, Central California. If you remember, in my last video, we were just here working on this switch. We were getting all kinds of, uh, well, no, I'm sorry. This port was disabled, and I couldn't figure out why. I'm jumping ahead. Um, so I re-enabled the port and was researching, think, why is this port disabled? And I've seen this like three or four times now. What we come to find out is there's, there's a, I don't know if you want to call it a bug or a feature in the firmware, where these ports, uh, some of them are used for uplinks typically, some are used for stacking typically. And you can intermix them both, use them for each, either one or or. Um, out of the box, this comes enabled for auto stacking. And that port is trying to look for other switches in a stack. So when you're using it as an uplink, they recommend there's a command you run. I'm sorry, I can't remember it at the moment. Uh, disable auto stacking, something like that. Um, yeah, it's to disable the auto stacking feature so that you can reliably use it as an uplink port. So I issued that command and it said, uh, after you issue the command, you should really reboot the switch. Well, I issued the command, it didn't seem to affect anything, you know, so I just left it. Well, later in the morning, we come to find out this particular port right here, the one that was disabled, the one I issued that command for, although it doesn't just affect that port, um, that port was throwing tons of receive errors, so, but we didn't know that at the time. So we came up here, all we got was a, a report of slowness up here. So, here being uh, one of the units in the hospital. Slow, slow, slow. So I came up here to investigate. Now remember, this is after the last video I made. Came up here to investigate, and um, what I found was some machines could connect, some machines could connect slowly, some machines worked fine, some machines worked slowly, same with wireless, and other machines couldn't connect at all. Um, I brought my laptop up here. It was working fine. I plug it into any port on this switch. It would work fine. Um, but there were like four or five machines out there on the floor that just, they were unusable. So, and then it started getting a little bit worse. So I had all the nurses in here um, gently asking me questions about what was going on. And so I called my boss and said, look, I'm, I'm running interference out here. Can you get into the switch and check and see if there's anything going on? So she gets in and she finds out this port that was disabled earlier is now throwing tons of errors. Tons. Um, so I said, well, let's disable that port and see what happens. So she disabled the port. Boom. All the errors went away. All the problems out, well, the errors didn't go away. They're still there on the port. Um, all the problems out there in the units um, just magically went away. So we thought, you know what, we better um, we better reboot that thing. So I set up an automatic uh, reboot schedule. Um, so it rebooted this morning at 2 a.m. I'm here at 6 a.m. now and checking on it. So I came in here and made sure that the uh, the fiber cable here was seated nicely. Um, this is the guy right there, that that particular fiber, and you can see the lights are all, all four lights are blinking, which means all four uplinks are enabled. And so after I re-enabled it, I wanted to watch. And I've been here making the video for a little bit now, and I hope you can see the link state's active, there's no CRCs, there's no oversize, undersize, there's no fragments, there's no jabbers, there's no alignment problems, no lost packets. So everything is looking pretty good. So one other thing I wanted to try, um, somebody recommended this. Here, let me set you down for just a minute while, while I type. Um, somebody recommended to check on the light levels coming through. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Show port. Uh, Transceiver information detail. That's it. I need the autocomplete to help me out here. Show port 
transceiver information detail. Which now I'm showing it on everything. I didn't need to do that. All right, here we go. I'm going to find the port of interest. I should have just done it on that port. Let me quit and just do it on that port. Yeah, let's do that. Then port fifty. There we go. Show port fifty. Transceiver information detail. All right. Show port 50 transceiver information detail. Okay, here, let's pick this back up so you can see what I'm looking at here. So here you can see it's an SFP plus, long range. Uh, it's made by Extreme. Uh, let's see what we can find out here. So temperature is normal. Uh, status is normal. Temperature status means it's okay. Uh, voltage, okay. Transmit power. Here's where the DBMs are. That's what we're looking for. Um, it is minus 1.92, um, which is in between the thresholds of 0.5 and minus 8. So that looks normal. Uh, transmit power, receive power. Yeah, that's still looking pretty much normal. Let's compare it to port 51. Let's do 49. Let's see, how does that compare? So, transmit power is minus 2, receive power is minus 0.9. Transmit power, that's pretty close. Transmit power is minus 2.41, receive minus 0 0.9. Transmit power is 1.92, minus 0.54. So they're fairly close. It looks fairly normal. So whatever was causing us our issues, it's definitely not due to the fiber. Well, I wiggled the fiber this morning, so who knows? So anyway, yeah, that's that's what we can find out with that command. Now that's sorry, putting the phone everywhere. That's not a Cisco command, so that that only works on extreme switches. So sorry, only my extreme followers can uh, work with that. So well, right now everything looks good. Um, it's right back where I thought I was last Thursday. Um, that port was not working. I re-enabled it, threw the switch into chaos. <laughs> we disabled the port, rebooted the switch. I just re-enabled the port and everything seems normal. So we might have been running into a firmware bug or we don't know what. So let's check the, uh, the um, port errors again. And right here you can see We've still got no errors. Let me check the transmit errors just in case. TXE. Let's do show port 50 TXE or RXE. That looks okay. And it updates. I mean, it's auto updates, so if you saw any, if there were any errors coming in, we'd see it. And what she, what my boss was seeing last week was. Uh, receive errors. So we're going to check the receive errors one more time. And they look good. So, all right, well, I'm going to go back to uh, Network Admin Central back across the campus there and uh, monitor for the rest of the morning. I'll just keep watching those receive errors, keep that uh, machine running, or keep that window running and make sure we keep this machine running. Um, and there was a question in the comments, you know, can I go into more about what these servers do? Unfortunately, I can't. I don't know what they do. Um, as far as I know, all they do is, is gather patient vital results, aggregate them all here from the different rooms, and then send them all to the server. And we have several different rooms, you know, wings of the hospital that are all kind of 
central centralized here with all those different machines but i i couldn't go into the theory of exactly how they work or what they do that's generally what they do so hope that answers that question so as always uh keep those great questions and comments coming um Love it. If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. Keep praying for our brother Sam Jones and uh, keep him in your prayers. If you guys got any other prayer requests, send them in, put them in the comments, and uh, be happy to pray for you guys. Oh, and one more thing. Somebody asked about that uh, network monitoring software I was using. It's called Intermapper. Intermapper from Help Systems. So look up Help Systems, look up Intermapper. Um, you'll find it there. So, All right, that's all I got for this week. Catch you guys all next time. God bless.